Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, we're actually taking part in a collaboration, a worldwide collaboration of homesteaders that was started by Liz Zorab from the UK and Wanda and Danny from Deep South Homestead. And this collaboration is called Our Homestead World. What this is this is an opportunity for homesteads across the United States and throughout the world to really provide differing perspectives on what homesteading means to them and how they homestead in their respective parts of the world. So I'm looking very forward to uh, being a part of this and already have enjoyed the submissions so far um, that have come in from uh, different countries and different states throughout the United States. So diving right in, um, question number one is where in the world is your homestead? And then qu question number two is uh, where approximately uh, is your homestead located? So as my standard opening for our YouTube channel suggests, we are located in uh, New York State, which is, if you're not familiar, the northeastern part of the United States. Most people, though, are familiar with New York City, and uh, so that's why I always specify that we are from upstate New York. Um, we are located uh, north of Albany on the um, Vermont, Massachusetts border, and so it's just an absolute beautiful part of the world. Um, I refer to it as God's country. I love it here. Absolutely love it here. Uh, the next question is, is this an urban or rural area? Well, where we live at is actually um, a rural area. We have working dairy farms, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, not too far away. Um, we have, uh, you know, other kinds of farms around us. A very agricultural community. Um, but we're also very uh, well situated and located um, very near to big box stores within 20 minutes to the big box stores five minutes away from a grocery store. So we have that rural feel. And again, we are rural, but we also have the amenities, the uh, conveniences of a suburban area almost. So um, we really, really love it here. Uh, the next question is, what size is your homestead? And is that similar to other homesteads nearby? We're on a little over two acres. Um, about an acre of it is wooded, another acre of it is um, where a house and uh, we have a fairly good sized yard and some garden space. Uh, as far as how that relates to other homesteads, quite honestly, I don't know a lot of other homesteaders in this area or people that would consider themselves to be homesteaders. Um, honestly, I didn't really consider myself a homesteader until about six or eight months ago. Um, to me, it was just living. I, 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 you know, I didn't really have a name for it. My mom and dad would consider themselves homesteaders. They have a little over an acre uh, of land. So I would say that one to two acres um, in this area is probably common for people who would consider themselves homesteaders. Uh, the next question is, what is the climate and weather like at your homestead? Uh, we live in an area where we have cold winters, uh, snowy cold winters. Um, not extreme cold for long periods of time. We might get down below zero for a week or two at a stretch. Um, you know, the snowfall, you know, can vary uh, where we'll have dramatic snowfall one year and the next year not quite as much. Um, but we do have snow every year. And uh, during the summer, it doesn't usually get too awful hot for too long of a time. But we can get up into the 90s, sometimes into the low 100s for, you know, a short period of time. But uh, generally speaking, we don't get quite that warm and definitely not the warm, long, humid summers like a Georgia might get. Uh, the next question is, um, what is your growing season? The first and last frost, if you get that. Well, we live in zone 5A or 5B, depending on who you talk to. Our last frost is usually early May. I think officially it's like May 10th is the average frost date. Uh, and then the first average frost is the end of September around the 27th, I think, is the official average last frost date. 
Um, my grandfather, who uh, lived in this area for almost all of his life, um, never really planted much of his garden um, before Memorial Day. And most people around here um, don't put in the bulk of their vegetable gardens until around Memorial Day. Um, much before that, and you're really you're, you're playing with fire unless you have um, coverings or um, some way to protect your plants. Uh, do you have any animals? If so, what, how many, and why those animals? Well, we have right now uh, chickens, rabbits, and pigs. Um, at one point, we did have ducks. We got rid of those because they were too smelly, and my wife and son decided that they didn't like duck meat, and so there really was no point of having them around. Um, we have chickens uh, for eggs. We uh, um, sell our excess eggs. We have a little over 30 layers right now. And uh, we also cycle our flock out every year. So once our pullets start laying in the fall, um, we will butcher off our hens. Um, I used to put them in the freezer, but uh, last year I canned them up and made some chicken stock and we found that we much prefer that. Um, my wife and son always felt like the chicken in the freezer was a little bit on the tough side. Um, I didn't mind it as much, but they found it to be a little tough, and it was definitely tougher than um, store-bought chicken. We canned it up last year and just have really, really enjoyed that. Um, so we raise them for, we, we cycle the flock out every year, and so we'll order um, chicks in the, um, in the spring, and they should be arriving here next week, or in two weeks, um, and then uh, we'll raise them up, and like I said, once the pullets start laying, then we generally will dress off the layers. This year we're doing something very uh, new to us, and that is that we are going to actually raise meat birds. We're gonna try a batch of 25 Cornish crosses, in the spring and we'll see um, how we like those for freezer meat um, so very excited about doing that and then last year um, well before we get to the pigs um, we also raised rabbits for meat um, I've tried selling the rabbits um, I haven't had much success with that I was gonna try to sell some rabbits for Easter this year grossly miscalculated on the dates um, and then, unfortunately, uh, the first litter ended up uh, dying. We had a windstorm come up, and I think they just got cold. Uh, they got too cold. Um, we also uh, raised them, and we used their manure in the garden. And as well with the chickens, we use a deep litter method. And so we'll compost down the litter from the chicken coop, and uh, we'll use that in our gardens as well. We've also used our chickens a little bit to till our garden plot. Um, I tried that last year a little bit. We're gonna be doing some more of that this year, so really trying to apply some more permaculture principles to uh, utilize our animals beyond just providing um, food uh, and waste for us, but to get them to do a little bit of the work. And then we got uh, American guinea hogs last year. American guinea hogs are a smaller breed, they're a heritage breed, a slower growing breed, and uh, we got them for a number of reasons. First of all, I have an area that's wooded um, that I really couldn't do much else with. Uh, there's a lot of shale, a lot of rock where we're at. And so it was an opportunity for me to kind of utilize that land. And I knew I wanted pigs. I just didn't want something that would be overly aggressive um, or something I would have to worry about with my son and, and my wife around. Uh, the American guinea hog is a very docile breed. Um, it's a smaller breed, so it's perfect for a family when you... When you um, uh, harvest them. You, you know, you're not looking at uh, more meat than one family can um, can handle, and uh, so it just was perfect for us. And uh, so we have right now 10 American guinea hogs. We had 14. Uh, we um, butchered three of them back in January, and then one of them unfortunately got um, uh, tetanus, and uh, we had to have it put down. Um, the next question, do you grow any fruit, vegetables, or grains? If so, what type? So we do a garden. Um, honestly, I had kind of lost my zeal for gardening uh, for a while. We had a large garden plot down at my grandfather's house, but when we sold uh, his property three or four years ago, I lost access to that. 
And uh, so I had a few raised beds up here, which I kept planting, but um, I just really didn't have the zeal for it. Uh, this year, I'm really, I've recaptured that passion. We're going to be expanding our gardens. Um, we do a lot of raised beds because uh, we have a lot, again, a lot of shale, a lot of rock in this area. And so it just seems to work better for us. Um, as far as the varieties we plant, we plant a lot of tomatoes, um, peppers, um, beans, cucumbers, um, lettuce, spinach, broccoli, uh, cabbage, you know, all of those kinds of things. And um, done a lot of canning, can a lot of tomatoes. We, we use a lot of tomatoes um, and uh, made a lot of pickles. Um, so I really enjoy that as well. Last year I also grew tomato um, potatoes in um, feed sacks and that worked out well. I'm going to be doing that again this year as well as we're going to be adding quite a bit of other um, stuff uh, this, this year um, into our garden. Uh, the next question, what is your diet like and has it changed over time? Our, our diet is, is nothing special or nothing, um, what do I want to see, rigid. We, we don't follow any particular philosophy. It's not like we are organic or organic only or paleo or anything like that. Um, we really focus on trying to grow a, a lot of our food, eat as much food from our garden as we can, preserve food. We, we try to um, can, freeze, uh, ferment quite a bit of stuff. But we still buy stuff at the grocery store. We still will eat processed foods. Um, it's just kind of moderation in all things, but doing our best to try to grow um, as much food as we can um, for our own consumption. Because at the end of the day, I don't feel like we, we save um, much money, especially not over the, the commercial stuff you can get at the store. Although if I were to compare what we grow to organic um, uh, vegetables and so forth, then probably we are saving money. But it, it's, I, I know what's not in my food, and I really like that. Um, and obviously you can't beat a fresh tomato from the garden, or a fresh cucumber from the garden, or the taste of, you know, homegrown fre uh, fresh eggs, or homegrown meat. Um, it just tastes so much better. Um, and so I really, really enjoy that. There's also a satisfaction, I think, that you get from raising your own um, your own food. And when you sit down to a meal where the vast majority of the food on your plate is stuff that you har you know planted, cared for, harvested, um, it's just a extremely satisfying thing. And you know the other thing about it is it gets me out of the house. In the winter time, you know I'd probably be getting fat eating Cheetos, you know. Um, in the summertime, I, I wouldn't be outside as much if I didn't have a garden, if I didn't have animals. So I think um, all of that really contributes to better health beyond just the fact that you're eating better food for you. Uh, let's see. Next question. Um, do you grow organically, intensively, commercially? How do you grow your crop? So we tr I try to grow um, everything as uh, naturally as possible. I don't use any or um, pesticides or um, you know commercial fertilizers in my garden. Um, I, I just have, have really tried to stay away from that. Um, as far as the animal feed, we do use some commercial animal feeds. I don't go out in search of organic feeds for a number of reasons. One being cost. Number two, I don't really trust. Um, the organic food supply. Um, I've just, as I've studied it, um, I just have a huge trust factor because I, um, depending on the study that you read, it's greater than 50% of the grains and some even say 70% or greater of quote unquote organic um, grains are imported from places like Russia and China and um, Turkey. And I just don't have any confidence or a lot of confidence in that process. Um, and so I don't, I don't get hung up on that. But where I can, um, I do try to, um, you know, use organic processes. My focus, though, is more on buying local, supporting local farms, local feed stores, local feed mills, um, and, and so forth. 
Um, do you sell any produce, livestock, or other things that you make or create in your homestead for an income? So we do. We sell some eggs. Um, in fact, we sold quite a few eggs last year, um, which really surprised me because the year before that, we had seen a huge upswing in egg prices, and then last year the bottom fell out, and I really didn't think we were going to be able to sell as many eggs um, as we had the previous year, and so I actually didn't uh, order as many birds last year. <laughs> And um, we couldn't hardly keep eggs in our box out by the side of the road. Uh, they were just flying out of there. As soon as I put them in there, it was like they were almost gone all last year. And we'll see about how things go this year. Because of the weather, I have to pull the egg box back. And our hens do take a, a little bit of a break. I don't add any, any artificial light in the wintertime. Um, and so the, the number of eggs that I've been selling throughout the winter has dropped. But it's been kind of... It's worked out well because it's kind of been on par with what my, my hens uh, have been laying. Although lately there's been a huge uptick with my hens. They've kind of gotten over their lazy spell. And because I'm not able to put the box out by the side of the road, I haven't been able to keep up as much. Um, but the good thing about having the pigs is uh, I can just take my excess and throw them to the pigs. And they chomp them up right away. Uh, we have sold a few pigs um, and I'm trying to do that as well. Um, and also this year I plan on trying to sell some vegetables and also to try to sell some transplants. So we'll see how that works out. My focus is to try to overproduce in areas where it makes sense. Um, not so much to make uh, a huge amount of profit, but to offset the costs uh, of what I'm doing. So my, my goal is is to be able to sell enough pigs so that I can raise a pig for myself for free every year. Um, my goal is to sell enough vegetables so that I'm covering the cost of my seeds and my raised beds. Um, that's really my goal. My goal is to take my, you know, the, the things that we're doing here and to use those so that I'm growing what we're eating, in essence, for free. Um... Do you grow solely for your own needs? Do you have, um, and obviously I've answered that question. Um, obviously the bulk of that is for our own needs, but where it makes sense, I'm trying to overproduce. Do you have any health issues that impact or guide your homesteading? And if so, how do they affect your living on your homestead? For me personally, I really don't. Um, the only exception to that being that uh, several years ago, I was having some gastrointestinal issues and um, they suggested that I started taking a probiotic pill. Well, I don't like to take pills. And so I went in search of where probiotics are found naturally. And that led me into the whole realm of fermentation. And I made a batch of sauerkraut from scratch in a mason jar. And I ate that and that cleared up the issues that I had. And so I just really became a big believer in that. And so we've experimented with different fermentation um, techniques and um, products. And, uh, and, and so anytime I feel like maybe my gastrointestinal health isn't as good as what it should be. You know, I go in search of making some natural probiotics, whether it's sauerkraut or whether it's, um, you know, some other kind of fermented vegetable or, or kombucha or something like that. Um, my wife does have, uh, it's not never been um, officially diagnosed as fibromyalgia um, but she has uh, problems where she does become overtired very easily and deals with some pain on, you know, at certain points, uh, uh, you know, kind of, I don't call them cycles, but, you know, sometimes she feels better and other times she doesn't. And so I, I do have to be very careful um, when, when we're, you know, planning and making plans and so on and so forth that I don't get so big that I overwhelm her and tire her out um, because she does help allow, uh, out with you know, feeding the animals and taking care of the garden and putting up the produce and all of those kinds of things. But I really have to temper my plans um, just because I want to make sure that I'm not overwhelming her and I'm not, um, you know, putting ourselves in a difficult position. But other than that, um, we don't really have any health issues that uh, have really formed our direction, so to speak. Um, wrapping up here, how long have you been homesteading? We have been homesteading. We've been on this property for about 10 years. Um, and so I would say throughout that 10 years, we've been doing homesteading type things. Just didn't know what to call it. Um, we grew up in families that 
had gardens, that preserved, that raised animals, um, and all of those things. So those concepts are not foreign to us. We just looked at it as a way of life. Um, and so when we went into this and we bought this property, we weren't looking to buy our homestead or to be homesteaders per se. We were just looking to live our lives. And it really wasn't until we got the American guinea hogs and I started watching YouTube videos on raising American guinea hogs that I really found this community and was able to put a name to our way of life. Um, so we've been on this property for almost 10 years and so I would say that that's kind of been the length of time that we've been doing this. Uh, do I do you like homesteading? I absolutely love it again for me. It's not a hobby it, although it, it's kind of a way of life That's comprised of a lot of hobbies. I guess one might say because you know, we're raising animals. We're raising a garden. We're doing compost. We're uh, you know all of those things and um, Really trying to take a holistic approach um, and I guess utilize permaculture principles although again, I didn't really know that terminology uh, until I really started getting involved in, again, watching YouTube videos and so on and so forth. Um, and now learning more about those things and becoming a little bit more intentional on our inputs and our outputs and, and um, you know, utilizing animals to, to um, maybe do some of the work. But I, I love this way of life. Um, for me, it's very satisfying. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's it's very enjoyable. Um, there's very few aspects of it that I don't enjoy. Even even some of the dirty, stinky, smelly jobs um, don't bother me a whole lot. Now, you know, do I want to do them all the time? No. Um, but the fact that I have to do them doesn't, doesn't bother me a whole lot. Um, I enjoy being able to try different things and to try different approaches and and, um, you know, try this and if it doesn't work, I try the next thing. And if that doesn't work, I try something else. So that experimentation, um, I, I enjoy all of that. And uh, so I, I wouldn't want to live any other way. Um, what homestead activity do you like the most? This is the last question. The homesteading activity that I like the most is making jams and jellies. Absolutely love making jams and jellies. Um, I don't know what it is about that. I enjoy canning. I like canning vegetables. I, I like um, canning tomatoes. I like canning the meat. And you know, I enjoy all of that. But there's something about making jams and jellies that I absolutely love. And um, in fact, uh, you know, I, I enter canned goods and and um, so forth in the fair every year. And uh, Still gunning for that purple ribbon. I haven't quite achieved that best in show yet, but someday I'm going to get there. Um, but I, I just really enjoy uh, making strawberry and raspberry and hot pepper. And um, I, uh, a couple years ago, I made some honeysuckle jelly. And so just absolutely made some apple butter for the first time last year. And uh, so really, really enjoy making jams and jellies and those kinds of things. And really hope to expand on that a little bit this year. Um, so, uh, but that, that for me has been, you know, my favorite thing to do, uh, on our homestead is to do that. So hopefully you found this enjoyable. You found this informative. Um, again, I, I'm very grateful to have been a part of this, uh, this collaboration. And, uh, so I will link to, uh, Liz's channel below. I'll link to, uh, Deep South Homestead below and uh, we'll get a playlist going with all of the submissions um, to this uh, collaboration. And uh, I encourage you to go check out some of the other channels because one of the things that you're going to find is there is no right way to homestead. There is no, um, you know, magic bullet. There is no, uh, you know, this is the way you have to do it. Start out. With, with if you're interested in homesteading, you know whether you're in an urban area or a rural area, whether you've got, you know, five acres or you've got no acreage, um, you know, it may be starting out by growing a tomato plant and a container on your balcony, um, but everybody can do something, and so I really encourage you, uh, if you are considering uh, whether you know it's, you're looking to buy a piece of property or you're you're 
you know, thinking about um, getting into homesteading, watch these different videos, different areas, different approaches, and glean what you can from them. Um, and I think you will be better off for it. And the more people that we have doing this, the better off we're going to be. Um, everybody is going to benefit, I, I really believe, by living this kind of lifestyle. So until next time, uh, like, share, subscribe, um, click the bell so that you're notified every time we upload a video. And, um, you know, if you didn't like this, if there's something I can do better, let me know. I want to get better at this. Haven't been doing this very long. And uh, so, you know, if you've got some constructive uh, feedback, let me have it. If you've got unconstructive feedback, keep it to yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Let me have that too. I don't care. Uh, I got thick skin and uh, it's all good. So until next time, everybody, have a great day.